Welcome back. So now that we have looked at the equations um, to help us identify the various cations, in particular we tested them using a weak alkali, ammonia, and a strong alkali, sodium hydroxide, and we got various combinations of colored and white precipitates, and um, we looked at whether or not they dissolved in excess sodium hydroxide or in ammonia, and so on and so forth, and we, we were able to identify seven cations calcium, aluminum, zinc, which forms white precipitates, iron 2, iron 3, copper, and ammonium. So now let's put it all together into a flow chart. So our topic is identifying cations. So the first step <clears throat> with any test is to add aqueous sodium hydroxide okay and once you've done that um, the first question you need to ask is whether or not a precipitate has formed so did it or did it not form a precipitate bearing in mind that we're only testing for um, seven cations here. Um, maybe I should just list the cations we're testing for. Testing for ammonium and then calcium, zinc, aluminum, iron 2, iron 3, and copper. All right, so this table only takes that into account. And if there's no precipitate formed, then what we should do is we should apply some heat to it. And then test the gas given off. So does it or does it not turn red litmus blue and if it does then we can say for sure that our test solution contains ammonium ions because remember in the previous video we showed that when ammonium reacts um, with sodium hydroxide and it's heated ammonia gas is released and ammonia gas is alkalic so it turns litmus blue and that's a positive test for ammonium ions on the other hand if a precipitate is indeed formed then we can make further considerations based on whether or not the precipitate is colored. If the precipitate is colored, then we have three possibilities. Whether the precipitate is blue, green or brown if the precipitate is blue then that means that CO2 plus is present if it's green that indicates the presence of RN2 plus Again, if you are interested in the equations um, that show the formation of these hydroxide complexes of these ions, you can take a look at the previous video where we um, discussed in detail the reactions taking place between the, these ions and the sodium hydroxide solution. And if it's brown, that indicates the presence of ion 3 plus ions. Now, for the case of 
copper, we can do an additional test, which is we can add to this resulting solution um, ammonia. And if it dissolves again to form a dark blue solution, then that confirms the presence of copper ions. Now the other possibility from this branch um, is that it's not colored, namely it's white. Then there exist three possibilities. Um, three ions are going to give us white. So what we do is we separate the resulting solution into two different test tubes. So what we have here after adding sodium hydroxide to the solution is a hydroxide complex, right, which forms that white gelatinous precipitate. And we take that and separate it into two different test tubes. So half goes in here, the other half of the white hydroxide complex goes in here. Right, you can see the white hydroxide complex. To the first test tube, we will add excess sodium hydroxide. Excess because we had already added sodium hydroxide in the beginning. And we're just going to add um, more sodium hydroxide. So we're going to add twice the volume of the sample that we have here. And to this test tube, we also add twice the original volume of ammonia. Right, Bearing in mind that ammonia is a weak alkali and sodium hydroxide is the strong alkali. So just right, split here to show the splitting of these guys into the two test tubes. And then we make a determination based on whether or not the resulting white precipitate dissolves in either of these or both or, or neither of these solutions, right? So what we had was the remaining three cations that we identify in were zinc 2 plus, calcium 2 plus, and aluminum 3 plus. Well, it turns out, um, you can look at the previous video where we showed the equations, that the zinc hydroxide complex uh, will indeed dissolve in both um, the excess sodium hydroxide as well as the ammonia. Now uh, one way I like to remember that is Zorro starts with a Z and he's really hard to catch. You know he disappears very easily so that's kind of a mnemonic I like to use to indicate the easy disappearance of the white precipitate in the presence of excess sodium hydroxide and ammonia. Uh, then on to calcium. Calcium um, doesn't dissolve in either excess sodium hydroxide or ammonia. So pouring this in, you'll still see the white gelatinous precipitate remaining in the solution. And the way I like to remember this is teeth because teeth is made of calcium and your teeth in particular enamel is the hardest substance in the human body so it's really really hard to dissolve hence it doesn't dissolve in anything and finally I have aluminum which dissolves in sodium hydroxide but not in ammonia so the aluminum hydroxide complex that white precipitate there will dissolve in extra sodium hydroxide if I pour more and more in but it won't dissolve in any ammonia. So the way I like to remember um, that the aluminum dissolves in sodium hydroxide is that sodium hydroxide is a strong base so it is strong enough to cause this white precipitate to disappear whereas ammonia is a weak base so it's not strong enough to cause the precipitate to disappear hence the precipitate 
remains in the solution. So here we have the overall flow chart to help us distinguish between these seven cations that um, I picked out to you know, um, take a look at as examples of how we can identify cations in the lab. So I hope that was really helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up on this video, and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think or if you have any questions. And I hope to see you guys around.